And yet, as many of you all know, exploitation is still happening in our communities. Individuals, men, women, children, adults, citizens, non-citizens, are still being exploited in factories, as domestic workers, in restaurants, and in businesses. Women and men are still being sexually exploited on the streets of Worcester, in clubs, and in well-known hotels right around here. Much work still has to be done. And this work isn't easy. It's not just a matter of rescuing women or locking up the bad guys. It's an effort of building communities. We must provide real, real meaningful support to children in our foster care and DCF systems who are aging out. We must provide real support for adults so that they have viable alternatives. We must provide effective programs to men and women to provide them with the job skills, community support, and a viable way to exit out of exploitation. We as a community need to develop creative and new models that really work. We need new ideas and new energy. We need survivor voices. Um, and the city of Worcester is doing some really, really exciting things, which I think Jane is going to speak about, and which the training today, which I invite you to join, will also address, um, in terms of beginning a new prostitution initiative, and some really great projects to, to look at exploitation in our communities and to develop real solutions. In our trafficking program, we've seen many men and women uh, who are trafficking survivors. They've been, been exploited, many for many years, and have found a way out. But the path out of exploitation is not linear. It takes many years. And sometimes it means that you're exiting out of exploitation into poverty or into being undocumented. These men and women are incredibly courageous and teach me every day to take power in our own lives. But we need to give them the tools, and that's what this rally is really about, is about talking about this issue, but also talking about real solutions. I hope that today is the beginning, and I thank you for be a, being a part of the answer. I also invite you to join us for the training uh, beyond uh, today. This, this training isn't about talking to you about this issue. It's really about inviting you to be a part of, the, uh, of this issue and a part of the dialogue. So we really hope that you, you join us, and thank you for being here. Thanks. So as you can see, we have a lot of great, great leadership in the city of Worcester, and there's a lot of good work that we can continue to do together. I next want to introduce our very own city councilor, Sarai Rivera, who's also a clinician and has worked um, in this field to, to make a few comments. It's really great to be here today for a number of reasons. I think that a lot of what we normally um, want to hear today has already been said. So what I really want to tell you this morning is to just bring you back to get to see the humanity of this situation, to personalize this a little bit for you. So you walk away with this, not just as, as a number, as a statistic, as an issue, but as something that really affects individuals. So several years ago, I've always been, I've been working with youth for over 20 years, but um, several years ago, um, I started working with Pacific youth, and some of them were victims of human trafficking. So I tell you the story of one of the people who are like my heroes. And he's one of my heroes because considering what he went through, he still is a young man that demonstrates consideration and love and compassion. But yet this man, this now young man, um, as a boy, was um, being forced to join a gang in his country. When he refused, they threatened to kill him. He still refused. They killed his brother and they almost killed him, putting him in a coma for two years. In two months, I'm sorry. Once he came out of the coma, the mother said, you must leave here because they will kill you. So he set out to, be, to go. On his way, a coyote kidnapped him. When they kidnapped him, along with like 50 plus other people to hold him for ransom, he saw, he saw someone killed right in front of him that was beaten. His blood was splattered right on him. So he knew that the day he was going to die, there was no one to pay a ransom for him. He says that it was a blessed of a day that um, on the day that he was scheduled to die along with two other people that were kidnapped and brought into this country and being held for ransom, the FBI found them. And he says that he really has a whole new birth and so he sees life in a whole different way. But he says that he saw and experienced things that were so unmentionable that he struggles to get them out. And this young man lives here in this city, productive young man. And so when you think about that these things don't happen, they're real. It's true. 
and and just like him i could tell you other stories of a young woman who was who was told come you know you're going to work you're going to work in the united states it's so great there and she's brought here at the age of 12 to be enslaved and the only way that she was found because she was beaten so badly that she had to be taken to the hospital and when they noticed that she was so young and didn't have parents her captors left she now still has to live in hiding not being able to be photographed or to be public because she would have been here today but she can't because her captors are still at large in the united states again a wonderful young woman who goes to school will be graduating this year and also loving and compassionate and so when you see this i want you to understand that these are not just people who are enslaved. These are not just people who are trafficked, who are just um, abused. These are human beings, people. This was somebody's mother, somebody's sister, somebody, someone. And so the first we think about, what can I do? I'm helpless. The first thing to do is get ed educated. There's a verse in the Old Testament and in the Torah says that people perish for lack of knowledge. One of the things that we have to do is educate ourselves. Be part of the conference today, the workshop, and the panel get to know what's happening get educated and when you do then you know to get involved but you know you may never know that that person standing behind you in the line in the supermarket or the person standing in, in a situation even at your job has been someone that's gone through this issue so let's get educated because as we do then we could actually do something about it really thank you for being here today because this is so important make sure and tell, tell a friend and share it do social media that's some of the simple things that you can do and thank you for putting this together So I realize this is a rather somber uh, topic of discussion, but I realize that it is also a very important one. So I congratulate you all for being here. I want to um, take this opportunity to invite you all, if you've not already registered, there is a training that's going to be occurring this morning in City Hall at 9.15. It'll last until noon. We have some great presenters that are going to speak um, in more depth on this issue. You're going to hear from Assistant District Attorney Courtney, Courtney Sands of the Worcester District Attorney's Office, Sergeant Detective Donna Gavin of Boston Police Department, and Athena Haddon from Everyday Miracles Peer Recovery Support Center, Sherry Jimenez from Kim's